19th, 2019 Parks Advisory Board meeting. Uh, roll call. Davis. Dirth. Here. Royal. Here. Herman. Here. Budak. Here. Hoffman. Here. Metz. Here. Miller. Here. Millet. Here. All right. Now for approval of the December 10th, 2018 minutes. Are there any corrections, additions, subtractions? See none. We'll entertain them. Yeah. Make a motion. Motion. Second. Got it. All right. Very good. Moving on to citizen statements for items not listed on the agenda. Just take a vote on the minutes. Oh, sorry. I blew it already. <laughs> um, we got to do a vote. To see. Um, well, just, yeah. Uh, so, approval of the minutes. Of the minutes. Yeah. So, what do I say? All, all, those, All those in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 And opposed? All right, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> I'm going to turn red. I, I have my warm sweater on. So. <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> okay, so now on to citizen statements for items not listed on the agenda. And seeing none, we'll move on to new business. Literally none. Um, Ray. All right, the first item um, is a carryover from um, your December meeting. It's discussion and a recommendation of rental fees for tennis and pickleball courts. Uh, if you recall at the December meeting, um, we did present some information that with the reconstruction of the tennis courts at Menominee Park, as well as the addition of our first pickleball courts um, outdoor in the city parks, um, we expect and we have been hearing and asking uh, by groups and individuals about possibly renting or reserving those courts. Um, at that meeting, uh, Al Wenig from the Recreation Department did give you an overview of their programs, and uh, staff at that point said, you know, we've had a long-standing arrangement with the school district that we do not charge them for use of facilities and, and vice versa. So um, just wanted to remind you about some of those discussions. Um, what we did in the meantime is the board had requested to take a look at some other communities to see how they're handling that. And so in your packet, um, you have some comparisons of some of the other communities that we got responses <coughs> from. Um, really looking at these, you can see they anywhere from $2 per court per hour, um, a lot of them at $5 <coughs> per court per hour, and um, a few of them going up to $10, $10 per court per hour. Uh, when we look back to a couple of years back when we brought forward a recommendation for um, the tennis courts along with the ball field and so forth, um, at that point we were recommending $5 per court per hour. Um, looking at the information and, and starting out with a new potential rental fee, that would be our recommendation to you again. Um, so we're open for discussion on that. Um, if, it, um, if the board would like to do so, what we would need to do is make a recommendation to the council as they need to final approve any fees. So. So open up to the board for questions for Ray or comments. Um, these charges, are they to play or just to reserve? That is just to reserve the court for whether it's a, um, a tournament or a league or <laughs> a organization that might be looking to run lettuce, lessons possibly, such things like that. How are you going to collect the funds? They would um, need to contact us if they want to reserve it for their specific use. Um, otherwise, it's drop in play just like anybody else. Um, so we have, um, just like any shelter rental, they would contact us saying um, we have these courts that we'd like to reserve and they'd work out a rental form with Stacy. We give them a copy and we'll actually have a copy posted on the courts itself on the fence, We just like a shelter rental. So that um, if they do reserve those and people show up, the person that rents them can say, well, I've reserved them for three hours or whatever it may be. Are we going to have any kind of signage that say park employee could, re you know, knowing that's going to be reserved or whatever, would go out there and hang a sign so that people would know ahead of time that the courts are reserved? Or what we do is um, similar to the shelters, we'll have, it's a calendar basically. So if there's, um, and I Stacy typically do that weekly, right? We put out at the shelters. So on a weekly calendar, basically we'll post out there if, it's, if there's any reservations and it'll show the times and dates okay. and so forth. Yeah, I think that's important. I, I know, for example, at the county park, they do that for the shelter rentals they put up sign that says reserved or whatever just so that <coughs> if people are there when they show up that they pretty much know they have to leave yeah we'll have, we'll do it weekly we'll put it yep. up there for the week and if, if stacy gets a rental on a tuesday she'll update it and the, the parks guys will get it back out and well I'm looking at every whatever of those that charge we're we're right with those that are and i think with the amount of uh, interest and 
what we put into our tennis courts and pickleball courts, it uh, makes sense to get a few dollars for it because there'll be maintenance in the future. So, uh, what is that the intent of the money then too? Is to go back into those facilities? No, it goes into the general fund for our existing maintenance. Okay. Um, I know the finance director in the past and some of the council members um, were trying to get rid of some of these um, smaller funds specifically designating for the areas and we obviously assume that there's going to be maintenance for tennis nets and posts and pickleball things so um, it goes back into the general fund at this point. Okay. Uh, one thing that you brought up which which I thought was interesting me this this is just me being an old program guy when you're talking leagues tournaments and lessons the difference between the difference between those um, tournaments tournaments are one-time pop you know people come in they're used for generating revenue actually for you know what the, the group that's putting it on or some special event league is the same thing it's just use of officials or refs during the time lessons are more community based they're teaching kids at, you know how to play tennis and how to use those courts you know throughout throughout the, their lifetime, because tennis is a lifetime sport and trying to promote it and getting, getting the courts used is an important, um, an important thing in, in the community. So my worry is if with, with lessons there, there's a fee for um, participating in it, but there's costs from all the instructors and everything else that goes on. If the fee's too high, my worry is it not making it feasible to do the lessons any, you know, to, to do the lessons anymore. So. That would be one of my concerns in, in this in this fee, and I haven't gone through because I don't run the tennis, you know, where we're at. But mm -hmm. that fee could be pretty large if we have a large group of kids coming out to do lessons during you know the summertime, mm -hmm. and and um, that would be my concern throughout this whole process. And well, <clears throat> the lessons yeah. are through the rec department, correct? At this point, yes, I believe the the YMCA is requesting to use it as well for some lessons. Okay. Um, and and we teach. I mean, we have our staff is the one that teaches the rec department okay. lessons. So I mean, we're part of we're part of that whole group. You know, for certain again, programs, from yeah, what I understand, yeah, from talking programs, with Sheila, tennis programs, right. and stuff well, like that. I think that. you know, and maybe there's that's where the exception is if it's like the Boys and Girls Club or the YMCA, because they already have probably some fees built in that. Maybe we don't charge them for the use of the court. Well, I know the rec we don't, right? We Correct, because they're through the school district. Maybe we extend that to the school district and the Boys and Girls Club because they're the ones that put on. And we do want those courts used, and we want youth getting involved in that. But if it's a, if it's a, a, a you know, a tournament or it's a, even a league, maybe um, I don't think the charges are absorbent for that. I, I agree with Lester as far as the youth. I, I think it's important that we. Give the youth as much opportunity to recreate as possible at no, no additional cost. One thing that I I would say I, mean, I understand where you're coming from from that. I think that from a facility standpoint, it might be hard to differentiate when the community ness comes off and then the profit making make comes on. And I think anytime you're you're charging a fee for a, for a service, whether it be a tournament or anything like that, it probably would be much easier to implement into function. Um, I I view the fee as a if you're taking it offline for public use, it probably should be, uh, there should be a charge for that just because otherwise the whole public aren't able to use it because of the lessons or whatever it would be. So my thought would be if we're going to do, we probably should lump, I think we should lump the lessons into that. Um, that's just my thought. Is there going to be a limit to how much you can rent it? I mean, what if a group rents it every single night of the week from 6 until 8? and then normal people can't use it. Yeah, at this point, um, we, haven't, we haven't been, um, nobody's asked to rent it that way, but it, it's potential. Um, you know, it's no different than a, a park shelter and other things too. But yes, it is a possibility that somebody may say we're going to offer a lesson Monday through Thursday from 6 until 8 and um, would request to rent those. Now, is this per court? Right. Per court, per hour, yes. <clears throat> And if they're a no-show, is there a charge for that or just? Yep. Um, if you're paying, you're reserving them, so people, okay. if you don't show up, it's we're not refunding at this point, no. Right. So then it's open to the public at that point if they're not yeah, there. Yeah, if they show up and it shows that somebody had it reserved and they're not there, you know, 15 minutes after their reservation time, I would assume that it's it's open for public. 
Um, and I, you know, back to um, your Lester, your point, I, I understand, you know, what you're trying to do. And I have to agree with Tony that it, it really gets difficult when you start making exceptions to one group is, is offering for the community and for the youth and, and definitely could appreciate um, that. But eventually, um, you know, when you're offering lessons, I think you're, you're planning to make money somewhat offering that. You're not just covering your costs typically. Um, but it all—it really just gets difficult to say that this group is offering it or this business potentially, because you might have a tennis business that comes into town and they're offering it for the youth, but yet we can assume that somebody's going to make money on the tennis courts. Right, and, and like I said, my concern is just not not just from my point of view, but anybody else that might be just pricing those. The cost might be too high to continue on with lessons and then we don't have you know then we don't have those lessons in the community so that's just that, yep. that's just what my concern is. Mm -hmm. is there any other comments or questions so we want to recommend um, something as part of this now is there a motion and a consideration <coughs> to be made <coughs> I'll make a motion that we do as Ray suggested that it's a five dollar per hour charge for all groups wanting to reserve. Is there a second? second? All right, now Stacy, you gotta tell me what I had to do. Um, <laughs> uh, Davis, Dearth? Aye. Royal? Aye. Herman? Aye. Hudak? Aye. Kaufman? Aye. Metz? Aye. Miller? Aye. Millet? Aye. Motion passed eight to zero. Oh, you said I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's always Don't one in every. One. There's always one. one in every crowd. It's me. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> um, just to make make it clear, the motion was all groups, but we're again going with the school district recreation right. is um, mm -hmm. not part of that. So right. Okay. Per court too. Correct. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. On to number two, review and recommend approval of the Red Arrow Park Baseball Softball Complex concession lease agreement between the City of Oshkosh and Oshkosh Community YMCA. Um, this agreement is um, very similar to what we've had with other past groups that have operated concession stands in the city. Um, years ago, the Boys and Girls Club operated the concession stand at REITs. Again, we um, used the consistent uh, agreement that you see before you. We also had the Eagles Club that uh, typically operates the concession stand at Spanbower. Again, it's the same operation agreement, the same rental fee um, for all of those. Again, if you want to take a look at that, it's listed. Page two, number seven, um, for the concession, concession stand use, the YMCA will pay to the city $1,000 or 10% of gross revenues, whichever is greater for each year of the agreement. Um, and what we do is we have those um, groups at the end of the season, uh, typically September or October, they'll provide their financial statements to us, um, breaking down what their, their gross revenues were, and then they'll uh, send us a, a rental check. That one, Steve, because it's for concession operations, we do have a separate budget for concession and okay. field improvements. So that one we do put into ball field okay. improvement fund. So, so we're looking, and this was, Stacy, remind me, is this a three year? Two year. Two. Two year, okay, thank you. And we have, um, we did send this over this to the YMCA staff. They've reviewed it, um, had their legal attorneys, I believe, look at it, and they have gotten back to us and said they're acceptable of it. So are there any questions for Ray or discussion points at this time? I make a motion we accept the lease as written and agreed to. Second. I'm sorry, who seconded? Thank you, Todd. <coughs> All right. um, Davis, Dearth? Aye. Royal? Aye. Herman? Aye. Hudak? Aye. Kaufman? Aye. Metz? Aye. Miller? Aye. Millet? Aye. Motion to pass 8 to 0. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Number 3, update on 2019 hours of operation for Menominee Park Zoo, Lake Fly Cafe, and Children's Amusement Center area. Jenny. Okay, so that is the top chart there. Um, so through the last couple of years, we've really, really struggled with staffing as we've shared with you guys and trying to find staff. 
um, to work when they're still in school. So typically, as you can see here, um, what it has been in the past, even prior to 2018, um, we were always open the first Saturday in May until the last Sunday in September. Um, and in t the years past, we have a hard time getting staff to work those days. Um, kids go back to school now like mid-August even, um, and then they don't come back. So this past year, we actually, all of our amusement staff were from you know, River Falls or somewhere three, four hours away. So we weren't even able to open like we were supposed to for the first two weekends of May. Um, so we ended up opening May 19th in 2018 which it was kind of a not a last minute, but it wasn't planned that way, so people were counting on us to be open. Um, and then again, we closed the 31st of August because not one person could work for us all through September. So um, it's becoming increasingly more and more challenging every single year. And last year wasn't the first year we had this issue. It's been going on for some, some years. Um, and we try to just take anybody from anywhere we possibly can and pull them together to make it work. But um, so we're proposing that we go um, Memorial Day to Labor Day, which is what a lot of people do um, that season when kids are out of school and able to work. Um, the zoo itself would still stay open from that first Saturday in May to the last Sunday in September because we have full-time staff that are in the zoo um, that, that take care of the animals and care for the zoo. So we don't have that problem with seasonals keeping things open. Um, and then the Lake, the Lake Fly Cafe would follow the other concession stand in the park. So all the concession stands would be open from Memorial Day to Labor Day. Um, as far as hours go, just kind of tweaking things a little bit. Um, at the amusement center, we get the comment a lot like, well, I, I get off work at 4 o'clock or 4.30, I have dinner, and I come down, and you guys are closed. Um, so we're hoping by pushing that start time back a little later and staying open a little later in the evening that hopefully we'll have some families that can come down and use the facilities more um, and that it'll be busier kind of, you know, staying open an hour later. Um, and then it was, I think, the year or the year before that, we actually changed the zoo hours to 6 o'clock. Um, and we've just got a lot of requests and a lot of comments on pushing that back to the original 9 to 7 hours that we kind of always had. So that's what we're proposing um, for the zoo hours and then the lake fly hours um, as well, going back to 7 p.m. So that is any questions on that stuff or comments or? I like the idea of having the same closing time throughout. It makes it easier, you know, every day, each um, amusement or activity or place, just as from, for public perspective to know 7 o'clock. It makes sense to me. And we'll have to do a little bit of, you know, it, it's great, like you said, for the public, but for us, for our manager to be in two places at once, shutting down facilities, but we'll make that work, you know. Um, that's something we know that we'll have to look at with the managers and kind of lay it out, how that's going to all, that's going to flow. But um, I think, you know, the park on a summer night, you know, you drive through at 8 o'clock, it's packed, you know, 7 o'clock, it's packed. So hopefully we'll have some families that can come down and use the facilities a little bit longer and that that will help um, down there. Are there any other questions or comments? So this one isn't an action item. So we will just move on to number four. Discuss and recommend fees for amusement rides and water equipment rentals. Tony, sorry. Let, let me just back. How Do you see this impacting your revenue at all by, by changing these hours? You, um, the season or just the till 7 o'clock? Just, just the whole season. I mean... It, I mean, we're going to not be open as much as the past, you know, so we're going to lose some weekends in May um, and September. But when we sat down and really talked about it, um, the first weekend in May can sometimes be often cold still right. um, and different things like that. The second two weekends are typically lake fly weekends um, with oh. Mother's Day weekend comes the right. lake flies. So those weekends have low revenue in the first place, um, and we really struggle to get the staff there. So really, the kickoff weekend kind of always that <laughs> Memorial Day. Um, so we may lose a little revenue those first couple weekends if it happens to be a really great weekend. Well, I'm talking about net, not so much revenue, just just the net side of things. And I know I'm asking you to guess, Jen. I'm not right. trying to box you into a corner. Nope. I mean, hopefully, I mean, we're hoping to see an increase in revenue with the with the hours and giving a little bit more flexibility with people. And on the weekends too, you know, being open a little. I mean, that's the goal is to to increase their revenue. Um, we're trying to find different ideas, which we'll get to when we talk about the rides. You know, staff wages are going up because um, we have to keep up with the times and what other people are paying, so we have to try to figure out ways to offset, you know, our, our revenue. Sure. So. I think the one thing to add in uh, with those areas of the zoo uh, and children's amusement area, 
a lot of the other special events that Jenny plans in addition to the zoo education events that we're hosting at different hours this year. Definitely hoping with the increase in people coming at those scheduled times in comparison. Uh, we played with the times cover and find something that we're going to try something a little different uh, for different hours of the day. So hopefully that'll increase attendance and revenues. Good. And we, we still plan on, um, you know, like in May is a big field trip month. So we certainly can accommodate to the field trips if they we're going to work on, you know, putting a scale together kind of if they want to bring a school group out. Um, we do have, you know, a couple staff that are non-traditional type students um, that can help out. So we, we certainly will still try to accommodate any field trip that wants to come out. We'll just have to set up special arrangements to make that happen. So. Thank you. Okay, um, discuss and recommend fees for amusement rides and water equipment rentals. Okay, so the bottom chart there. Um, again, as you can kind of see in the memo, we have not looked at raising any prices um, since 2004, so we're at a good five years here um, on the whip and train ride. And since I started here in 2003, um, the rides for the, the or the prices for the water equipment have been the same since 03. So, um, long time coming there, 16 years of the same the same price for that. So we're just looking at a quarter increase um, on the train and whip ride, and then on the kayak canoes and paddle boards and the other water equipment, um, we're suggesting three dollars an hour increase, um, and then two dollars for the aqua bikes and mini pontoons. Again, that's try to, to try to help some of the, the revenue um, be increased. And of course, like with the train, you know, gas prices have gone up through the years. Again, staff costs have gone up through the years. Um, so just trying to offset those prices a little bit to, to reflect that, so. Jen, I, I, I need to know what a whip ride is. <laughs> <laughs> well, the whip ride is that little, the little ride for like 12 and under that spins in circles. It's the little cars that spin around. Okay. So, and we of course used to have the carousel, which is the next item we'll talk about, you know, over there in that in that area as well. Um, but right now on the chart here is what we have at the amusement center. So that's what we're proposing for that area. I, how how big of an impact would it be? Just and again, I'm not trying to box you into a corner, but yeah, I I see so many little kids on that on that train ride. I, I'd like to keep the price the same there. And not raise that price it, it, and it's mostly adults using the other stuff for older kids right the aqua bikes and paddle boats yeah i mean you know a lot of families come up with like a child you know a child like right. a mom dad and a child but yeah i mean the the kids love the you know love the train of course but it, it would it be a big inconvenience to us if we kept the train ride and the whip ride the same and then agreed with all the other increases Okay, so I did an average of 2017 and 2018. I took an average of those oh. two years um, just because 2018 was, the attendance was low for us for things um, due to it was a hot summer and we have a hot summer. Numbers are down at the amusement center and up at the pool. Um, in addition to our lagoon in 27, this past year, 2018, was it was terrible. Um, another thing that we're talking about and working on, but it just... The, we had the dead fish kill, which was really yeah. bad, and then the lagoon was just awful. So our numbers were down. Um, so I took a two-year average. So if we were to average 27 and 2018 with a quarter increase on the train, um, it would be an additional $5,000. Um, if we did it for the whip ride, it literally equals $500. That's not a, you know, um, in 2017, the whip ride had 2200 44 riders and in 2018 it had 1456 riders it's not a huge ride for the summer so between those two rides you're talking about five thousand five hundred dollars um increase in 2019 with a quarter a quarter increase that's it's, it's real money yeah okay how much um chad a year do we spend on maintenance on the train do you know so the train will range i would say out of the past few years between forty five hundred and six thousand dollars a year and repairs repairs hmm. yep and, and uh, reconstruction and i know what you mean bill and what we're trying to you know i just want families you, you, you know you, you think about going to a packer <coughs> game or a brewer game i mean families can't do that stuff anymore it, it's yeah. it's right. it's beyond their price point so and and i i just like to keep this as reasonable as possible i guess well, it seems like the re increase will cover the increase or expense of repairs to the train so yeah and a wash i guess yeah they look at it the um, other ride, the 
The difference for the kayak and canoes and aqua bikes and paddle boats, that is um, essentially about thirteen hundred dollars. Um, for so we we track them separately. The kayaks and canoes are one price, with the paddle boards are rented for an hour, and then the aqua bikes are a thirty minute rental. So we track those different rides separately. Um, so if we take an average um, of the kayaks, canoes, and um, paddle boards, again, that's like a $1,300 increase, increasing it by $3 per ride. Um, and then the same with the aqua bikes, that's also a $1,300 increase. So when we're looking at the water rides um, for 2019, doing the increase as shown as a chart, it's about a $2,600 <coughs> increase on those. Um, but again, we're really hoping to um, make some headway on that lagoon this year and you know possibly looking for grants and different treatment options and things which would increase our water rides back up because they have dropped the last year or two due to the condition of the lagoon and right. and things like that so then that number would of course increase as well but I also want to keep in perspective too with the amusement accounts uh, you know it's the operation of the machines the staff costs for them that go into there we have had seasonal increases over the past uh, three years, uh, hopefully to retain staff for different areas, which have been a, a big jump in our budget uh, in comparison, uh, which ranges close to about $7,000 in a difference compared over that those time periods. So the offset uh, is minimal to our users to hope that we can sustain a little bit more uh, flexibility in our accounts too for these operations. So. So just kind of adding all that up together, um, the train, the whip, and then all the water equipment. Eight, eight grand. It's about eight grand yeah. for, for 2019. Um, and we do, again, the seasonals this year, we'll have a two and a, you know, two and a half in two and a half percent increase across the board. Um, they'll have that as well. So um, on, on top of everything, the two and a half percent increase? Well, this, it'll get, be the same wages for the seasonal staff. Okay, okay. So they'll have right. an increase in wages this year as well, two and a half percent. Um you know, compared to 2018. Okay. So. The lion's share of the money's coming from something I don't want to raise the price on. So you're, mm -hmm. I'm having this <laughs> dilemma. <laughs> I just add on to a little bit what Jenny and, Jenny and Chad have said is um, we do separate out revenue and expenditures for the rides, concessions, all those areas. And um, I feel that if we don't do some kind of increase, we'll be coming back to you possibly before the end of this year I to say, we have to evaluate if we're going to have any amusements. I got um, it. Our amusement funds right now are at about $1,700. So we cannot barely open up next year unless we have some um, revenue to offset that. And because it's so weather dependent, um, and we have been getting, um, at budget time, the city manager and finance director see these. Um, the concessions area down there is in the hole by about $40,000. So again, we're looking at ways um, changing hours, looking at pricing, other things that we can do in order to keep that service. But eventually, um, we need to look at some other alternative revenue or that service has to be really looked at, so. It seems like for the, at least the water rentals, very, still puts us very competitively with other communities or less than with those increases. So that seems reasonable. And we didn't want to make a huge jump. I mean, the first time increasing, but it has, you know, it has been 13 years for sure. Um, actually more, 15, 15, 16 years for sure, so. Any other comments or questions? So this one is a action item. And so is there a, um, a motion to, for one way or the other? From our committee. I'll make a motion to accept the fees as recommended. I'll second that. Jenny? Davis, Dearth? Aye. Royal? Aye. Herman? Aye. Hudak? Aye. Hoffman? Aye. Metz? Aye. Miller? Aye. Uh, Millet? Aye. Motion passed 8 to 0. All right, number five, <clears throat> discuss status of carousel at Menominee Park Children's Amusement Center. Chad. Okay, um, as you're aware, the carousel has been out of operation till about 20, since about 2015 due to some major repairs with the hub, which is the center point of that uh, unit towards the top. As you see out there right now, you drive past the site, there's a mast 
uh, standing uh, for the main base of the carousel. Uh, basically to get at that hub situation, we had to remove the entire canopy in order to get that down for a potential repair. Um, back at that time frame, uh, during the time of when it broke, um, we took the carousel out of operation to evaluate where it would be on a restoration cost or a repair cost uh, for that unit. And once going through all the revisions of different areas, knowing that this unit is a 1932 to 45 uh, year of manufactured type unit, it makes sense to do more restoration to that if it was going to be reassembled. All those parts are not something you can just buy over the counter. They all have to be manufactured uh, and delivered and then installed obviously uh, going forward. And back in 2016, early on when those were taking place, it was about $133,000 for all the components to go through. And that's also with repair or restoring a couple of the uh, uh, animals and the chariots that are missing uh, from that unit to bring it up to full speed uh, going forward. Um, since that time, we haven't done anything because obviously our amusement uh, fund does not support that type of restoration costs. Uh, we've also looked at different areas to try to see if we can fundraise some funds to go through, looked at different uh, comments from the community wondering what the status of the carousel is going forward. Uh, but looking at the cost of it right now, uh, just don't see a point of where we can start uh, unless there's a major donor going through or if something happens to restore that type of unit. Um, trying to research more further uh, with some vendors, or not vendors, but uh, people that have these types of uh, aged units in their park system or amusement centers to know what they are doing different. Um, I still need to research that farther with a few of them, uh, but I'm very concerned of where the price may go at 2019 rates uh, for restoring this, knowing where steel cost or manufacturing may go in the long run. So I think it's just open for discussion of where we may or may not go uh, with this type of facility uh, or amenity uh, for that area and what we can do. Um, knowing where we stand in the revenue status, as Ray mentioned, with some of those areas of a, of a deficit uh, that might be or going through, is this a good opportunity to look at selling that unit to help offset some of the other areas in our revenue area and revitalize or come up with a new plan uh, for the amusement center going forward and what it can do and survey results uh, out of the public to know what they'd like to see in that area. So I think it's just a great discussion for the board to have what we can do and knowing what you know is some of the background is and the history of it and where it goes from here uh, to know how we'd like to pursue. So. Ch Chad, are there any other identical ones out there that we're aware of that we could buy for parts instead of us selling ours? That I'd have to go through the historic registry of how they have these units out. There is an actual carousel registered group out there and oh. I think it's just a matter of registering them to know where they can stand or what they have available. So, But I do know when you get into all the the minuscule parts uh, to go into of having them manufactured for um, use is going to be a challenge. No, oh, so it, it's it's custom parts. It's I mean, custom and to keep yeah. the authenticity of it, you, you'd have to go that route. Yeah. There's very little modification. So, how much was it used when it did work? Was it well used or? There, on the top of this page, where the cost of the repairs are on the top, there's a chart there. Chad, if you had to guess, and again, I'm not boxing you into a corner. I, are we talking 75 grand? Additional? No, right, to, to, to get it up and running right now. It's I mean, so it, was it, 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 oh, it was 133. I thought yeah. we spent that already. No, no. no. Okay. That, that's what it would be. Okay. Um, but it, that was back in 2006, those 16, team. those estimates okay. are from. Yes. So they probably have gone up. I'd have to reevaluate that to see what there is um, on doing that. The biggest thing alone, and I'll tell you from a price tag standpoint, is the major part of that hub that to replace up on top at that time was just over 14000 okay. just for that one piece. So, And then taking those apart and knowing that there's a lot of lumber that's through there for your main stringers to support that device at that point. I'd look at redoing this. That's just manufactured steel and hardware component. That's not counting any of the lumber for the stringers or the decking okay. of that facility. And it's all wood. So right. besides the metal hardware, it's in there for all the bracketing and things of that nature. It reminds you of it's, it's set up like an old top. If you know a top spin on the thing, okay. that's exactly what it does. It sits and it spins on that whole deal. Um, and the other thing too with the mast out there, it is slightly off plumb, which probably caused the gear 
to get out of shape at one point for doing that or the bearing assembly. Um, so it'd have to be the base would have to be replumbed as well if that's the case, which would be a, a, a challenge. <clears throat> but if there's groups out there or people that want to look into it, I think it's something to consider. But it's a it'd be an undertaking. Ray, oh, oh sorry. I I think you'd have to look at that. And, and me, I if you it depends on the size, uh, Becky. I think of what you want to go into. If you want to say on the smaller scale, you know, and I can't give you a, a distance of uh, footage across it, like this one is basically a 36 foot, um, um, no, 54 foot um, span across. It's a large carousel, a uh, large park carousel. Depends on the size. You can go down <coughs> to a little bit smaller. Would we have a, a 30 footer that we looked at around 75,000 at that end to go through? I don't know what the base is or how it is to be assembled or how that works, but. Uh, if you go to different facilities that have these carousels, I don't want to say you put one out there and it stands in the elements all the time. I would, that's not counting a potential shelter for this to be in that can be used throughout the course of the year and just general protection through the winter months. So it's something to consider if those types of amenities are brought back into this into this sequence or system. Well, how much? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Steve. I just think when you look at the fiscal impact, you know, 130 thousand now to repair it or more the age of it and and even though it it appears through the long range park master plan that people are interested in amusement rides i think maybe we should um take this year to do some surveying what what do, what do families yeah. want to see down there that we can afford and put in our budget is it is it is it a carousel ride is it is it uh you know we got a few slip and slide places you know i think a water park would be you know even a different type of water park would be something that families would be interested in and you know obviously we can't compete with bay beach and places like that but i think it um if we're going to spend 130 plus i think it'd be nice to see what the citizens would like to see down there in amusement rides and what can fit into our budget you know so that again ray can plan for maybe you know the 20 cip if there's something in there or we could put something in there ray have you no talked idea. to carlene at all about this um, is there any interest there we haven't had a lot of interest and uh, I think the biggest interest is hearing down at the amusement area when they see it's not operating we'll hear people then right but we haven't had a large contingent coming forward saying save the carousel right but, um, <laughs> I know. Yeah. um this is it's a decision that we don't want to make tonight we just oh no I abs absolutely we wanted so, to give yeah. you guys some background give you something to think about um, and what we plan to do because uh, it's it's got some you know history to it and so forth that eventually this board will make a recommendation to the council and what we want to really do is, is let's focus on this carousel <clears throat> if we want to stay in the amusement ride business is a separate discussion I think and and we can share some financial information on you know that stuff with you um, and again Becky you brought up a good question if we want to stay in the amusements and, and carousels do we sell this one get what we can and you know budget to bring another one in for 70 or a hundred thousand dollars um, that's those are all the discussions we'll kind of want to have with you but um, again because this is could be a, a, a bigger decision than the parks board and staff we weren't going to stick our necks out on oh. this one so um, we'll, we'll let the council have that decision on a Jen can I ask that for for next month's meeting that that you could go back as far as you can and see what we've made and what our costs have been for 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 a reasonable amount of time you want me to go back past 2012 yeah I, I mean so what we've got invest in this thing kind of as a whole and, and maybe get a history of it I, I don't know if, if that's too challenging I don't know how far back your records go but um, no I can um, I, I guess to make this easy go back as far as you can yeah you, you know I think that's gonna be the hard part that's uh, yeah it's just I don't know I uh, that can definitely be done. We can go back and try and look at some expenditures to go through. But I think the one thing on the graph that I want to show through, when I went back saying what I have for just miscellaneous repairs and uh, you know lumber that's breaking, some minor hardware stuff that we did, it was kind of an average of that $400 for those years. Then I look back into 2008 prior to my existence here, we're doing there, and they, we spent about just over $8,000 on repairs to the carousel. Uh, with the previous staff that was here to going through I was like well that explains why we didn't have much up until that point and I believe in 2012 when we broke down we actually had a beam on the deck break that was the issue that shut us down in late to, in uh, August but we were able to get it repaired minimally to go through from that end but this 
this kind of broke the camel's back that one with the big right. hub up there on top to operate so okay but we could go back and do those things and find that in detail but i just know that was a major expense or an overhaul back in 2008 sure. uh, when that happened so would you also have to hire an additional seasonal staff person to monitor that we would yes yep do you recall what you charged to write it i mean i'm just looking at the revenue at that price just to get that fixed we could be talking a hundred years to make back the you know like the carousel always went with the whip okay so it's always the same the, the train was always a little bit more and the carousel and whip were always the same price okay and you know i don't know if you guys remember years and years back i mean we have tried other things you know back when tom was here so have you been here for eight years Nine. Our, Nine. our new parks director. So I mean, so years and years ago, um, we did one summer. We rented some rides. It was like a little jet plane ride and a little elephant ride, and they were kind of behind the carousel back there. So you know, it was Tom's thought, like, oh, we'll have a couple more rides down there, and we had to pay a rental for them, and we'll make enough money. And it, I, I think we just about washed even, if we even washed even, you know. So it was something we had tried adding a couple more things down there, and you know that didn't work either. So. Um, I mean, like I said, that was some years ago, but um, it just it didn't prove to be good for that either. So, so park park rides are going the way of the county fair rides kind of thing that with all the theme parks and all yeah, the bigger I mean, parks, the little little stuff oh just doesn't. I, I say we get one of those like big this. parasailing boats. So there yeah. can't be any liability <laughs> in that. Run that thing <laughs> daily <laughs> out there. <laughs> Jet rocket things, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And we can give you a we little bit. Trampoline. <laughs> we can give you a little bit of the history on how we got to here. We can provide some of that. But back in, um, I think it was 2001, um, the city actually purchased the rides from a, um, a family that was running the business, basically. And I don't have the numbers handy, but we can share that with you for next month, just to give you an idea. But back then, um, I believe we paid like eighty-nine thousand dollars for the rides. Um, they looked at the business plan for this com or the uh, family that was running it. And they were running at a break even, basically. They were making maybe what we're seeing, a thousand dollars a year, um, but they weren't planning, and that didn't include putting money away for a capital, which we are now seeing we're going to have to bite a big capital expense. So it's it's definitely something, and that goes back to the '90s when they shared those records that it's been difficult to even break even on these. And that was so, with that. I mean, when that family ran it, it was pretty much run by them. They didn't pay, you know, they didn't have staffing costs. I mean, they were down there all the time, so. You know, we have to add that all on top of all the staffing costs, too, you know. Is there anything else that would help your discussion? And, again, I I think we need to separate out, again, what I said is the, this carousel versus do we what do we do for the amusements in the future because we need to figure out what we want to do with this one and let the... Well, where I'm coming from, and it's strictly emotional, I mean, where can a kid go and get on a on a almost 100-year-old ride? You know, I think that's kind of neat. But from a from a cost analysis i mean 130 grand to fix something that's 100 years old doesn't probably make a lot of sense either so it's strictly emotional and i don't know if i could vote to put that burden on the taxpayer you know i, I think if we could do something some some alignment or, or, or some partnerships with uh, the foundation and, and po possibly a grassroots fundraiser or something like that i know those are always a challenge but uh, i i would have a hard time socking the taxpayers for 130 grand for a, a carousel that's 100 years old well then it comes back to becky's yeah. question if that's right. something well, we want to do then we maybe set out and try to raise 75 or 100 thousand right. to get a possibly a, a 1950s or 60s <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and i guess the other thing to, to, to bill's point is what does it the whole amusement center cost in a calendar year to what we're paying out in expenses and in income, or I mean, in salaries, in uh, labor rates, uh, downtime, to d is it even profitable to have all of these things in the park? Or is it time to look at something different down there to attract more, more people down there? I know the hours are going to be different, which we hope will attract. The tennis courts being redone should attract people down to that area. The zoo always does. But what is, is the amusement rides the reason people come down, or is it something else? Or could we provide something different that would even bring more people down to the park? Just have TV. Yeah, well, yeah. Nice. yeah. <laughs> but you know, well, we've talked a lot about we, we we've talked about a lot of this stuff. Right. Chad and I a ton, and Ray. Um, you know, one of the things 
I think with Little Ashkash to that project, you know, that's going to be new and great and fresh and, you know, bring people down. And, mm-hmm. um, and this year we really, we've, we do a great job marketing events. Um, and a lot of our events, people come to year after year, so they know they're there, they know they're coming. Um, but we really, really want to focus on facilities this year too. Um, not that we don't, you know, market facilities. We do, but just really concentrate on marketing facilities, you know, that we do have the zoo and we do have the amusement center. Um, I mean, I've been in the zoo before with the, you know, people from Appleton in there. They're like, I never knew the zoo was here. No, I never knew we had a train, you know, so just kind of put more focus even more on those, on those centers. And um, hopefully that will help as well. So. Is, is this a recent survey done after the carousel was the, um, handled? The first one that's in your document, and Stacy can pull these up so the public can see. This first one, if you look at the bottom, was the Menominee Park Master Plan, and that was done in 2012. So just taking a look at, um, we pulled this out because it was asking the survey respondents 10 most used park features, trails obviously being the largest, up to about 60% of respondents, down to um, tennis courts, which is less than 10. Um, tennis courts, ball fields, amusement rides, all just under 10%. And then uh, 10 most liked park features, so from the most used to the most liked, you can see it didn't change much. Um, same thing with amusement rides, sports fields, um, kind of being even actually a little bit lower than 10%. So that was back in 2012. The next one uh, that's showing page 22, 23 on the bottom was actually when we did the um, comprehensive outdoor recreation plan update, which was last year. Um, and so there we asked the question was should the city explore or investigate and then we left open some uh, questions um, athletic field complex bike and pedestrian trail expansion off leash dog park and you can see that um, replacing the carousel at Menominee Park was uh, just over 31 percent of the respondents said yes we should so about a third um, obviously I think bike and trails are uh, facilities are not a, a big surprise to anybody so Looking at those two, it, to us, it doesn't seem like a um, a big attraction. Um, and but you know, again, we're for another day. But I think that's important information to look at because it's the most recent survey information we have. So, well, and, and if you look, I'm sorry, Tony, but I think the number of respondents on the most recent one was 600. If you take a look at top 631, yeah. that's pretty good. Which isn't a bad response rate for um, a survey of that type. So. I, and I think it goes back to what Bill was, was saying. Um, I don't know that anybody's going to take the survey and not think that the carousel sounds like a cool thing or just, like it's a it's a really neat feature. But then you start looking at the the details afterwards, and I think that's the the problem. May so. have been different responses if you said at a cost of one hundred. Yes, right. exactly. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Anything else you'd like for us to bring back? I mean, we got some things that Jenny and Chad can work on as far as a little further back in the history on the number of riders, um, revenue and expenditures, the further back we can dig. Um, we can provide some of that history again on, you know, when the rides were purchased and the information that I shared. But um, Would it be possible for companies to, like, sponsor a horse or, I don't even know, yeah, are there ab- other things yeah. than horses? A chariot or something. So there's a couple of that. bigger seats on there. There's, I think, two of the bigger seats where people could sit rather than be in a horse. You know. Mm-hmm. Right. How many How many horses are on there? I guess just guess. Jack. All of them. <laughs> 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 all these All these ambush questions. I know this is a, this is a life This is a life deal here. <laughs> there's supposed to be three rows of am- animals on there. We had two on there and uh, two chariots. There's supposed to be a grand total of four. I thought it was supposed to be 24. I was going to say 24. 24 total animals on there. Okay. Yes. And we're we're missing, I think, uh, I think four right now, and we need had what six that were going to be replaced. The escape or <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. the, the ones corral. that got away. They got out of the corral. <laughs> Darn fence, hole in the fence. These, you know, these are all great ideas, and you know, reaching out and trying to raise funds. But I will remind you, we are currently trying to raise funds for the Eagle Exhibit for the last three years. Um, whenever we build a shelter, we're trying to raise funds to add a, um, certain things onto it. And the community is actually getting tapped out for a lot of these. Um, I'm not saying we can't give it a try, um, but to, the Eagle Exhibit is one we still don't have the fundraising for, and we're um, just finalizing that, and that started back in 2015, I think. So um, I know we do a good job. Jenny does a great job getting sponsorships in for a lot of that. Um, but at some point, there's certain things that we just can't bite off on donations any longer. 
Plus, I think your last year of operation showed you were in the red with it. So, uh, it yeah, doesn't seem like a good. I, I think we should have bets on which horse is going to win the race. <laughs> <laughs> we can have the Preakness, because of the Belmont Stakes. Yeah. <laughs> no, these are all great questions, and and we can fill you in a little bit more with Jenny and Chad have been talking about. Um, you know, if we get past certain amusement rides. Um, what are some things that we're looking at? It might be things that don't have such a big capital expense um, down the road. It might be something a little more um, less expensive to operate. But definitely some a discussion we need to have right now on this because a decision needs to be made. So, Do we know what the current value of it is as far as with the different horses? That ha have to, I'd yeah. have to research that further. And it'd be good, again, looking into that historic registry and searching out some. But it can what it can. Because I'm sure for. there's you know it's worth something or oh for sure mm -hmm. yeah. I look into that see if we can find. Well, yeah. I'm I'm I, you know if you can get some historical information on this thing maybe maybe that'll rattle some other money opportunities out there for us. So um, there's there's got to be a history here. I mean if this thing is that old there's you know there's got to be some documented history on it. So. Almost as old as you, Ray. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> if you think of anything, if you think of anything uh, before next month that you know you want some information, or if you find something, if you're up and online, and you know we can get you the name of this, and if somebody else wants to jump in and do some research, we're more than welcome to have you take a peek around. Too. But some good discussion, and mm -hmm. I think it's something we'll continue to have on the agenda. We'd like to see. A decision made hopefully in the next month or two so that we know you know what we're going to start to look at doing for that space even for this year we can do something down there so is it what? uncovered right now like can you go down and look at it or is it all there's closed? nothing there it's except not the pole. Just the oh there's nothing there no, there hasn't been no just the base of it a month might be unrealistic for us to determine if there's a true need out there though your, your true want to raise money for this thing right you, you know i don't want to Box us into 30 days here making a decision on this. No, that's why it can stay on here until okay. you guys are ready to make a decision. So, yeah. anything else? All right, m we move on to old business. Is there any old business? All right, seeing none, next up is staff reports. Ray? Right. Um, a couple items that um, to give you some updates on, and as we talked about last month when we uh, provided the strategic plan update, we're finding that the new year is kicking off to be very busy already. Um, we're looking at requests for quotes for our ball field improvements coming in, um, and that's Spanbauer Field um, and Rainbow Ball Field, which Sid Supley continues to raise money for. Um, she is close to um, one hundred thousand dollars raised um, and so we are putting out a request for um, quotes to, for the infield and the fence work at both of those fields um, they should be those requests should be going out this week hoping to get them in by the end of the month and then what we'll be able to do is um, award those specific projects um, what we are doing is obviously it's all weather dependent and we know that last year didn't cooperate with the the late spring snowstorm and then the wet season in the fall is we have Tech Miller Park that um, we still have to finish up the ball field. But our hope is that as early in spring we can get those two projects rolling and um, if the weather cooperates we can get those done um, the early part of summer. Um, that's the ideal schedule. The play equipment at Stegbauer Park, um, we have sent out the request for proposals on that. Um, I have been working with the Neighborhood Association there. They've identified um, some certain pieces of equipment or things that they'd like to see there. Um, sent that out to a lot of the playground vendors. They've been calling with some questions and um, been meeting with a few of them. But I think those proposals are due on February 4th. And so we're looking to have that project um, constructed this spring. What we're looking to do is in the, um, uh, the Sacred Heart Neighborhood Association area, which is near Knapp, Knapp and 9th in that area, right by Stegbauer Park, they're going to be having an event called Rock the Block with the Neighborhood Association. Um, and that's, I believe, April 25th through the 27th. And it's going to be a, a, a neighborhood improvement project where um, volunteers can come in and help with landscaping projects, um, home improvement projects. So what we're planning to do is, is our contribution to that is we're going to start yanking the old equipment out so that people get excited for the something new happening in the park. So we intend to remove the play equipment um, 
around that time, April 25th around there. So we have a clean slate for the new equipment to come in starting uh, May 1st, and we're asking the um, award, whoever we awarded to, to have it completed by the end of May. So hopefully when by the time school lets out, we'll have a, a new playground there again, all weather dependent. Um, the Lakeshore Park Master Plan, um, we have sent that out for um, proposals to come in. Those are due to us on February 7th. Um, just to give you a tentative time frame that we put in that um, RFP. Uh, the RFP was issued January 8th. Um, we're expecting to have those due to us February 7th. And then um, we'll be taking some time to evaluate uh, the firms that are interested in doing so. I would expect it's going to take us most of the month of February to narrow that down um, with an anticipated selection of a consultant early in March. Um, projects start up mid to later in March um, and what they'll start doing then is um, meeting with us and um, getting the again some kind of a tentative timeline going. I would expect that in April, May uh, that'll be the initial public input where we'll have a number of public input meetings. Um, we're looking to have joint meetings um, probably with the Parks Board, Sustainability Board, and the Bike and Pedestrian Committee uh, because those groups, we want to make sure and give them an opportunity <coughs> to weigh in on, on that plan as well. Um, so we'd like to try to get most of the groups together at once. Um, so you can expect you'll hear a lot of that during April and May. Um, possibly have a conceptual, a couple of conceptual plans for the site um, done early in June. Um, and then from there, we can start refining those conceptual plans into July and August, um, and then hopefully get um, the preferred plan to all the different boards and committees for a recommendation to the council, because it'll have to go through this board. Plan commission needs to make a recommendation, and then the council ultimately um, approves that. So our goal is to have a final um, master plan completed out there, hopefully September, October, so we can start including things in our capital improvement budget for 2020. So this is all tentative, but at least give you an idea on kind of how it's going to fall for the next couple of months. Um, the Eagle exhibit, as I, as I talked about, um, we are very close to getting uh, the final fundraising done for that, but we are still accepting donations. So uh, if you know of anybody, they can um, contact the foundation and make a donation there. Um, unfortunately, we just had... Um, Went out and got some updated quotes last week because we had heard steel prices were going down. Uh, we found steel prices went down a little, but the netting prices went up about eight thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. So our project number has gone from two hundred seventeen thousand up to two hundred twenty-eight thousand dollars. So um, stop checking prices. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. Uh, but we are taking um, to the council next week. Um, it's a three-party agreement that we've used with uh, the community pool as well as our otter exhibit. It's an agreement between the city, the community foundation, um, and actually C.R. Meyer is working on this project with us. Um, so it's a three-way agreement and then also having the acceptance of donations from the um, community foundation on that. So my goal is by the time this is approved and going to council next week, we're going to have the fundraising um, where we need to be. And then um, once the agreement is approved, we can have um, some of the materials getting ordered and the project starting um, as soon as the weather allows. So, and that's, like I said, exciting because we did that. We started kicking that off in 2015. Um, and then another item, our parks building, if you recall from our capital improvement um, budgets, we do have um, a need for a new parks building. And so the Common Council has a workshop scheduled this Wednesday, January 16th at 5.30 p.m. Um, it's in this room, and what we'll be doing is we had um, Bolt contractors do an assessment of our existing facility, and then they also um, gave us some cost estimates to, um, one, either demolish the existing building and build new on the same site, or if we could possibly save the shell of the building, some of the, um, the steel piles and things that are in there that might be reusable and essentially build around what's salvageable. Um, the difference in the, the two projects is about a million dollars to completely um, demolish and build new. Um, so that'll be presented to the council on um, this Wednesday evening. So if you'd like, you can attend and, and listen to that, or you can, I think it'll be televised as well. Um, those are the big ones for now. Chad? Questions? I'm sorry. <coughs> Chad? 
Just to give a highlight of a couple other things happening uh, in the near future, the Bowen Street Fishing Pier, which is also part of our CIP plan for redecking and the railings for that. I'll be meeting with contractors to develop some additional updated costs for that one going forward. Uh, we started uh, demolishing the interior of the West Haven Park restrooms, uh, as those will be part of our plan for uh, ADA compliance and upgrades to that entire facility. Uh, going forward, the zoo maintenance building, we're actually in phase two, which is part of the smaller animal enclosures on the uh, north side of the building that we'll be working on over the next two months. Um, equipment maintenance is a big thing for us for changeover, plus we have some new equipment coming to our department. Uh, we just inquired, a, got a, uh, our, from 2018, our uh, zero turn, another polar track mower system um, for um, our, the parks part. And then also for going into 2019, we have a mini excavator and a trailer uh, that we'll be uh, searching quotes for. Uh, Bill uh, Sturm Forrester is working with uh, Central Garage in regards to a replacement for our aerial truck, uh, plus our chipper box truck, and we have one other pickup truck uh, that we'll be working on for this year. So those are our big things that we've been going on right now. Uh, some internal items with the Pollock Community Water Park, just some maintenance in there. We end up removing a, a cycle, a sequence of three pumps a year. Uh, so they go every three years for service and rebuild, uh, which is a big deal. And with some of the things happening inside that facility, um, just with the age, you know, we're starting to sense uh, things that need repair and a little more upkeep too. Uh, you know, it's 2006 doesn't seem that far away, but uh, long ago, but it's been in existence for a while and you start seeing some of those things, spending a little more time over there this winter in comparison uh, to last year. So, and the forestry division has been out with a lot of the uh, terrace tree trimming and removals right now since the weather's been uh, cooperative from that end going forward. And probably the final note is, um, as you know, we have the ice rink down at uh, Riverside Park that we've been trying to make freeze quickly, but doesn't seem to happen. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll see what the likelihood of that is gonna happen over the next course of a couple weeks, uh, um, knowing that it's been a challenge, um, but we will see what happens here, if we can keep addressing it or not this time, and hope to have it open a little bit this year, but uh, that's no guarantee. So updates will be continuing on our social media uh, to know what our status is with that going forward. So, Is there ice on it now? There's ice on it, but the problem is it's not froze all the way through. Oh. Uh, so it's a floating slab of ice, and mm -hmm. if you get a number of people on there, you'll push the water to the top, and that's the issue we'll have. Um, but I know the forecast looks good for uh, cool temps here now over the next couple of weeks or towards the end of the week. Uh, but we did have a little disarray with the sheet down there from people on there with skates that chiseled away top park. It'll be a little tough to rebuild, uh, but we'll see what happens here. So <coughs> maybe you can move the whole thing to Menominee Park with just the grass. You could just have it, you know, people yeah. can skate yeah. all over the grass the there. Grass. So, oh. <laughs> but that's all I have if there's any other questions. How many inches is that sheet, Chad? The sheet itself, well, it's a little off by about three inches, so you're probably looking at about a, a foot on the deep end uh, and eight, nine inches on the shallow end right now. So. All right, Jenny. Good. Okay. Um, so working on lots of different things right now, trying to get things in place. Um, so bands coming up here, we are gonna do, we'd like to do a little um, kind of a Facebook poll um, for a Tuesday night concert series. So last year our Tuesday night concert series was, um, it was awesome. We had great weather. We had over 6,000 people there um, within the, the six week concert series. Um, that one is sponsored by Verba Credit Union. So they were very happy um, that the numbers had really gone up from the year before that. We also had a family entertainment sponsor last year that was WPS so we could have more um, family friendly stuff down there every week, face painting and people entertaining. And um, so it was great. So I'm working right now on getting ideas for bands that are within our budget. Um, we usually pick about 10 bands and put it out there and have people vote. Um, we can't just say, you know, who do you want to hear? Because someone wants to hear someone that costs $5,000 and we can't do that. So um, we kind of get some, you know, feedback um, from different sources of some good bands and go from there. So working on that right now. So we're excited for that. Um, as well as getting the family entertainment each week, what we're going to have there. Um, we try to have different groups of people in the past. Um, you know, the Jets have performed. Um, 
We've had different um, karate clubs perform, you know, things that bring different groups of people down. Um, it might not be someone who wants to come out on a Tuesday to listen to music, but they'll come down um, and watch their son or daughter perform in whatever it is that they're in. Um, this year, I know for sure Richard's um, dance will be down there one night. Um, and then they say stay and have food from the food trucks and stuff, so um, it works out nice. Uh, we will be having food trucks again this year down there so those I've been working on contracts too with people um, getting things set up for that so lots of good stuff happening for Tuesday nights already um, I've met with Verb as well and we've talked about different ideas and things that they plan on doing and that we plan on doing so um, another thing that I've been working on is our it's called we need each other Wednesdays it's our um, education program in the zoo um, so we'll soon be looking for a new education coordinator for for this 2019 season um, but it's a it's an education program that we have for six weeks during the summer on Wednesdays. Um, again, free to the community, free to families, come down. Um, we have all different, you know, anything from raptors to reptiles to um, snakes to um, we have David Stokes who does a, um, like all different kinds of frog. I mean, it's just awesome. All different kinds of things that kids can come down and sit through a program and learn. Um, and the court, of course, the more that we can get sponsored, the kind of the more we can have of those. So. Um, one new thing this year for 2019, I'll kind of pass this around, but the first one's coming up on January 25th um, and then February 23rd, we're going to have mascots and movies at our senior center. Um, now that the senior center is under um, the parks department, we kind of have that nice building that we can actually do some stuff in the winter time. Um, so we're going to have a new mascots and movies and um, have some, we're going to have fun crafts and a couple games, um, you know, we'll play the movie and have some light concessions and so just something again that families can come to free <coughs> during the winter months to, you know, for something to do, get out of the house a little bit. So um, we'll be doing two of those for sure, January and February and um, if they go well, maybe we'll throw one on there in March as well. So um, again, just to try to bring in some extra revenue um, and the down season to offset other things. So. Um, and this year I'll pass around, I'm sorry I couldn't print copies because we're not really, it's not done yet, but um, this is something that actually Julie, one of our seasonal um, managers that work part-time has been working on, but um, this is kind of a guide, a sponsor guide. So you can take a look through here and see, um, we do a ton of stuff at all of our different facilities. So it's broken down between the, the amusement center um, and you'll see there's a couple more events planned this year again to bring extra awareness and hopefully bring more people down to the center um, and then it goes down to the um, the zoo and then the leech amphitheater and then the pool so this is a it, you know this is everything we do and kind of all the sponsorships i need to go after um, so it's a great tool that when i get to sit down and talk with someone new i can say okay here's what we have um, you know what may you be interested in some people like to do something little at each facility, so they want to be a piece of the pool and a piece of the, the leech and part of the zoo. Um, and some people like to just do one event at one facility. Um, so you'll kind of see it kind of on the left side. It'll say what it would cost to sponsor everything at that facility for the whole summer. Um, kind of like what uh, Winnebago Community Credit Union does. So they sponsor all the special events at the pool. So they have a sign that permanently stays. If you go to the pool, you'll see at the front of the pool, it says, um, special, special events sponsored by Winnebago Community Credit Union and they sponsor all the events for the summer. Um, so that's great, that works out really well. Um, and then some of the, like at the amusement center, we usually, you know, it's usually one event. A, a business will sponsor one event. Um, so this is something that I've been working on and it's almost complete um, to really use when we go meet with people and talk with people. So um, we can get a copy for you guys after it's 100% complete, but um, That'll be nice, and it'll work well, and kind of just show everything that we that we do, which is a ton of things. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. Anybody have any questions on any of that? This says to call for the movie playing. Do we know the movie yet? Yes. So I can tell you that the movie well, we're doing a baseball theme. So it's going to be um, the Sandlot we're playing, and so we're going to have um, baseball related crafts, baseball related games, concessions. Right. Um, due to our marketing <coughs> or due to our license, we cannot print it. So people gotcha. have to call. So for the title, we can talk about it. We can't put it on print. Um, that's Maybe you might want to mention it one more time, Tony. <laughs> 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 um, and this is a little different than our licensing for the summer. Our sponsors that we use. Um, this is the senior center. It's a it's an indoor facility license, so it works different than our um, summertime license. 
So, uh, yep. So it'll be Sandlot and all baseball related stuff. So. Um, Fang will be there for now. That's the one we have confirmed for sure is Fang. So um, we're waiting on to hear from some of the other ones. So. Okay. And you said you were going to email that sponsorship packet out? I can once it's completely That'd done. Be awesome. um, we're kind of fighting, like the pages are flipped and stuff. And mm -hmm. actually, um, we actually just got confirmed yesterday or Friday that um, um, Oshkosh Corp is back in for Touch a Truck as well. They're going to sponsor awesome. that. So I've kind of been updating it. I don't really want to print. You know, um, when I go meet with someone, I'll print one and take it with me, but it's kind of continuously being updated. So, um, but yeah, once we can figure out why the pages are flipped all funny, I'll, I can send it out to everybody. Anything else for Jenny? All right, on to other business. One piece of business would be, they included in our packet, the directory for the advisory park board. Please make sure that all of the information is correct. And if not, I'm assuming talk to Stacy. All right, any other business? Okay, seeing none, we move on to adjournment. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Um, so all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? All right. Passes. Tony. All right. Adjourn.